a pleasant afternoon to everyone, uh, to our, especially to our media friends. Uh, I'm Robert Domingo, your moderator for today's pre-event press briefing. So, as the Philippine Department of Energy hosts the 12th APEC Energy Ministers Meeting, from October 12, that's tomorrow, and October to October 14, Wednesday, we are glad to be joined by our Energy Policy and Planning Bureau Director, Jose T. Tamang, Jesus T. Tamang, sorry, uh, Energy Visayas Field Office Director, Antonio E. Labios, and Energy Undersecretary and also Philippine Senior Official on Energy Leader, Loretta G. Ison, who will be running us through on what will happen during the EMM-12. So may I now hand you over to our Undersecretary for her presentation and opening statement. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Maayong hapon. Uh, we're happy to be here uh, to do this briefing because we know media is a very important partner of ours when it comes to this APEC event that we will hold this next coming days. Uh, it is the 12th APEC Energy Ministers Meeting to be held October 12 to 14 here in the beautiful Cebu. Uh, we have for our theme of this uh, APEC Ministers Meeting towards an energy resilient APEC community. As we have emphasized before, APEC economy should learn from past experiences and shift to sustainable development to focus on energy resiliency, which to us would mean mitigating climate change and also looking at the adaptation part of it. So the meeting at Shangri-La Resort and Spa, uh, which is just beside Moven Peak, uh, will have all the 21 APEC economies uh, participating, all of them have confirmed as well. And um, as part of our preparation for the, we call it Cebu Minister's Declaration, we have had several consultations all over the country uh, through the help of USAID. Uh, this is for the purpose of getting some inputs from different areas in the Philippines with the objective of uh, being able to somehow integrate or incorporate in the Cebu Minister's Declaration the Philippines' perspective on how APEC uh, uh, meeting should proceed, uh, taking into account the, these uh, concerns coming from the different areas in the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Now, to give you an idea on the sub-teams that we have uh, included in this meeting, we have four sub-teams. First is the climate proofing, first sub-team is climate proofing energy infrastructure, which basically involves the assessment and measures to prevent disasters from disrupting energy supply and services. Next sub-team is advancing cutting-edge energy efficiency technologies. So as maybe some of you are informed, the Department of Energy has long been advocating the efficient use of energy. With the fast-paced development in technology, we hope that economies will continue and further enhance their energy efficiency capabilities so that we're able to reduce energy intensity in each APEC economy, which should redound to benefits when it comes to energy savings and uh, deferment of, of some megawatts requirements for each economy. And then the third sub theme would be promoting community-based clean energy use in energy poverty-stricken areas. Clean energy access is the concern all of, all of us should be. So we should be using renewable energy and some other forms of clean energy because we want to uh, attain low carbon future for the Philippines as well as in other APEC economies. And the fourth sub-team is 
Improving energy trade and investment in APEC. So this is actually the heart of APEC, improving trade and investment uh, among APEC economies so that progress will be there. And for our guest speaker, she is the Honorable Senator Lauren Legarda, who will speak about green growth and sustainable development. And we have invited four international speakers, resource persons, to discuss the different four sub themes that we have lined up for discussion during this energy minister's meeting. And we have also have invited the moderator in the person of Mr. Rick Cohison from BBC. So as I explained earlier, at the end of the APEC ministers meeting, we hope to have the Cebu Declaration uh, approved and signed by each one of them. And this is revolving around energy resiliency. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Yusek Aison, for the thorough uh, presentation. As we op open the floor for questions, may we remind everyone to kindly raise your hand, wait to be recognized before be approaching the mic, and please introduce yourself and the media entity you are representing. We would also like to note to avoid non-APEC related questions and to ask all your questions now before, because our energy officials will not be entertaining any question after. So, any question? First question, sir. Questions? Yeah, uh, yes. Miss Mads, first. Later. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Mads good afternoon. of Manila Bulletin. Uh, could you provide us more details on the Cebu Minister's declaration? And um, I understand that uh, the Philippines is waiting for uh, APEC funding on the on a project that will promote uh, clim our resiliency to um, to climate change. Um, what's the update on that? Thank you. Yes. Are you referring to the nomination we submitted to APEC? Yes. As far as the low carbon model town yes. is concerned? Yes. yes, we submitted Mandawe as uh, our nominee for low carbon model town. Uh, this is for, uh, because we, we, we see their programs. They have a greening program where they identified growth areas within Mandawe and then uh, these growth areas that they have uh, identified will be linked or interconnected with the other uh, neighboring cities within Cebu. That's one. So, and I think there's an ordinance that they're coming up with so that they'll be able to add, uh, do some energy or, or promote uh, energy resilient buildings. And then I think they're into green buildings. And um, I, 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 have, I, I, I saw the, the, the clear targets that they've set in order to reduce uh, carbon dioxide emissions. And these are very important criteria in, in, in the decision to vote or to choose whoever the, 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 the candidate city that will be uh, given this low carbon model town. Uh, benefits or, or be chosen. I think even Russia and Malaysia submitted their entries to this low carbon model town program of APEC. And uh, the city or, or municipality that will be chosen to be, we call it LCMT, will be announced on Tuesday during the energy minister's meeting. So I think we should keep our fingers crossed <laughs> that Philippines gets it. Yes. Okay. Uh, second question. Lego.
Carlo from Freeman Newspaper. I would like to ask further details on the Cebu Declaration that you mentioned earlier. Could you give us uh, further details, ma'am? Uh, we, we can only tell you the highlights because uh, it's something that has been drafted, will be uh, reviewed by the APEC Energy Working Group by Monday, tomorrow. And then once all the senior officials of APEC, this, this means that these people, the senior officials would be the deputy ministers or the undersecretaries in different APEC economies. So once we have finalized it, that's the only time we will present it to the ministers on Tuesday uh, during the energy ministers meeting. But we have a presentation here. Can we show the presentation? which would identify uh, the highlights of the Cebu Declaration. So of course it deals with energy resiliency. Can we, can we show that? Yes, we can show it. Thank you. Actually, this, this um, presentation that we have prepared for you this afternoon would also include the program for the day, three day uh, APEC event. They're just preparing it, ma'am. Can you show it to them? No. no. So we, we wait for a while. Okay, for for the meantime, any more questions? Sir, yes. Good afternoon. I am Elias Bakero of Sunstar Cebu. Uh, my question is, uh, if we go for the reduction of carbon dioxide in order to counter climate change, do we mean to say that uh, the Department of Energy will not anymore allow the construction of coal-fired power plants, which are considered big contributors to carbon emission? That's not that's a difficult question, but of course uh, we really have to uh, answer that. The, the the Department of Energy has already done some simulations on what would be our energy mix or fuel mix within the next coming years, 2030, 2050, and if we continue um, uh, approving. Uh, coal contracts, we might be really uh, largely dependent on coal, which according to you, I agree very much with what you said, that uh, coal is polluting our environment. But on the part of the Department of Energy, we are working on a fuel mix policy, uh, firstly for, for power generation, so that we'll have a balance of all the resources or of all, of all the fuels that we're using. So the plan is to have one-third coal, one-third natural gas, and one-third uh, renewable energy. So as you may have heard, we're pushing uh, renewable, e renewable energy, and I think for, for some programs that we have on natural gas, we can also go natural gas. So we want fuel diversification, which means we have not only coal as fuel, but we have as well natural gas, renewable energy, and if there are other emerging technologies that we can use as fuel resource, source of fuels, we can do that. But uh, the plan is to have a balance of all these resources, So, which means that we really will not really be continuing so much in, in, in having contracts for coal, but it has to be, uh, it's, it should be gradually done and, and the phasing should be there because we cannot just say, we don't like coal right now, so we don't have it. No, you cannot do that because we, otherwise we will not have power or electricity that we need in our daily lives. One more question. Okay, sir. Uh, you said, uh, there's a gradual, what do you mean, uh, gradual phase out of uh, plants, power plants? Actually, no? we're working on the program, but then the idea is just to give, give you the broad, broad, broad strokes. 
we will have a balance of the three. So mm -hmm. either, because the situation here is coal, there are old plants already, maybe they need to retire and mm -hmm. then replace by new plants, or if all these are still working now, maybe we can slow down approvals of contracts. So we're still uh, working on that. It's a work in progress, actually. Yeah, okay. Because uh, uh, as uh, I review the records, uh, Renewable Energy Act was passed in 2008, Eight, yes. and uh, that was during the Arroyo administration, yes. and the target was 2013 for sufficient renewable energy. And uh, so my next question is, what are the recommendations of the Philippine government in connection to that Cebu Declaration to reduce carbon? Actually, there are targets, there are aspirational targets that we have in APEC. So it's doubling the share of renewable energy from 2010 levels. But uh, if I may, I don't say it brag, but we in the Philippines is aiming for tripling the share of renewable energy by 2030 uh, using the baseline 2010. So. Uh, I think we're successfully uh, in it now. In fact, if I may just report to you, there are about 682 contracts that we have uh, already approved for a potential capacity of 13,600 megawatts. So that's something that, uh, of course, it's still potential capacity because these have been approved and they have to do pre-development activities until to the point that they will be operationalized. And then for the, lo the um, energy intensity, we have uh, targeted, what was that? 40%. 40% by 2030, 35. So these are the aspirational goals, goals at the APEC level. And all the uh, APEC economies, of course, it's an aggregate. Uh, everybody should collectively contribute in attaining those goals. Because like, for example, RE, Philippines may be uh, fast, very fast in, in, in uh, attaining its objective, but some other countries may be not that fast. So it would be an upset, upsetting arrangement so we can give more, but others may not give that much. So it's something of that sort. So those are among the, the aspirational goals of APEC. Okay, we can go back to the presentation now for the key elements of the energy minister's meeting. Okay. Okay, we have listed the following as the key elements. So. Resiliency of energy infrastructures. Maybe you would ask me what's energy resiliency in energy infrastructures. So when we say energy resiliency in infrastructures, we mean that our energy infrastructures can withstand extreme natural and man-made disasters. And once these disasters happen, uh, our infra and energy systems can recover and uh, be able to return to normalcy in a timely and efficient manner. And we are able to build better so that uh, we're able or more ready to handle this man-made and natural disasters for which the Philippines is one of all the victims. Always, we're always devastated by extreme weather conditions and other sort of related uh, events that's happening in our country. So next would be energy investments. We want to promote investments in the Philippines. We want more investors so that we have more power generation plants and that we're able to um, cope with the increasing demand for power and energy that we will encounter starting now and, and for the future, considering the past economic growth that we're experiencing. 
low carbon developments on this, of course, are clean energy technologies that we want to put in place so that we'll have a low carbon scenario as part of our low carbon scenario. Then energy water nexus, ecotourism sites, so we can identify ecotourism sites. Regional standards on energy products and services, inventory and mapping of energy resources, and I think we also need capacity building, so we need human resources development activities, and to integrate women, we want gender fair approaches in energy so that men and women are uh, participating and ben are benefiting from all the programs that we have in energy. Okay, uh, uh, Director Tamang, would you like to add, or Director Labios? Well, the call for greater investment is not just for Philippines, but, but the whole of APEC. You know? And if we really want to be able to promote the use of uh, low carbon technologies, promote uh, more energy, use of more energy efficient uh, technologies, bring power and other energy services to remote areas, this will all require substantial amount of investment, not just for Philippines, which is an archipelago, but to include all other economies, uh, member of, uh, of APEC. The call is not just for investment, but also for us, for APEC member economies to facilitate investment in and among you know, uh, APEC member economies. We mentioned about uh, harmonization of standards. The basic idea is that these are going to be energy efficient uh, equipment, appliances, and devices. What is produced in the Philippines can be also uh, made available in other economies. The same way that we import uh, equipment, appliances, and other devices uh, for Philippines use. You know? So it's going to be what's available for us, what is uh, rated as energy efficient for us will be equally recognized in other economies. We are also talking about our professionals being equally recognized to practice their trade or their craft on energy efficiency and even the low carbon uh, uh, areas, I know, you might work areas dyan, like uh, that will, uh, uh, things that will need to be able to undertake green building design, green building uh, constructions and uh, other related implementation. We have our loss on renewable energy we believe this can serve as a good model to other economies and therefore they can be looking at this uh, 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 law and hopefully our experts on energy, even maybe our lawmakers, can be tapped by the other economies to learn from uh, the law that we have provided to strongly promote uh, renewable energy. We're also now crafting, uh, uh, pending in the both houses of Congress an energy bill you know, to promote energy efficiency. We hope to be able to have that also in place so, such that the practice or the requirement for energy efficiency and conservation become, uh, uh, become institutionalized for all consumers, no? not just for the heavy consumers, but for everyone. There's a strong promotion for energy efficiency to be a way of life. For now, it's Philippines who's actually act actively promoting energy efficiency being our way of life in all ages, you know? But we hope that with the meeting now uh, scheduled uh, here in the Philippines by energy ministers, it will be something that will equally be promoted by all the energy ministers in their respective economies. So we're hoping that their good experiences and our good experiences will be I don't know, uh, undertaken and together will be utilized to promote a cleaner and low carbon future and um, whatever is going to be required from one economy to the other will be greatly facilitated uh, through the trade liberalization and related uh, requirements. Okay, we'll be going through the program for tomorrow. And... Uh, Can we show that? Wait. Okay, there. Okay, this is the program in general, I mean, at a glance. Tomorrow we'll have the Spatial Energy Working Group uh, finalizing the Cebu Declaration, Ministerial Declaration. And then we have a press briefing right after that and some bilateral meetings in the afternoon. 
So, of course, the dinner is there for, uh, as a show of our hospitality to our guests from the different APEC economies. Day two is the big day. We have the energy ministers and energy CEOs dialogue. Uh, this is uh, about an hour's meeting where the investors, the businessmen, business sectors, private sectors will be in um, conversation with the energy ministers. Right after that, we'll have the energy ministers meeting, the 12th energy ministers meeting, uh, at where the opening ceremony will have keynote speaker, our keynote speaker, Senator Lauren Legarda. And then the meeting proper, the plenary, where we will have the four uh, resource persons to speak on the different sub-teams and uh, discussions, interventions from the different 21 APEC economies will be uh, ongoing uh, for each of these sub-teams. And this will be capped by a press conference by our OIC secretary, Senaida Y. Mansada, in the afternoon, and then the welcome reception. Day three would be the technical cultural visits, uh, part of it, which would be the heritage tour of Cebu. So that ends our um, meetings, APEC meeting, because by day three and day four, uh, they're scheduled to be uh, leaving the country already. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any more questions? Sorry. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Angelo Samonte from the Presidential News Desk. Ma'am, is the use of uh, nuclear power is still part of your option? <laughs> Kasi th this is much cleaner than other, th than the co con conventional uh, coal and uh, bunker fuel. Is it is still part of? Kasi once in, in a while, lumalabas po yung issue ng, about nu nuclear energy. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're correct in saying that it's a cleaner fuel, but then, of course, our problem in the Philippines is social acceptability. A lot of people are not really in favor of it. But we as a Department of Energy is not really uh, discarding it. Uh, we're not scrapping it. It's always part of our long-term option. So uh, there are some studies already that are being done right now and some evaluation and some... Campaign, uh, information campaign, but we really cannot really say uh, that by this date or by this year we will have nuclear power, but still an option in the Philippine energy plan. Because when all other fuels are not there, maybe we, could utilize, we should utilize nuclear. Okay. Ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm Chris Chris Mundo from Philippines News Agency. Is the country's goal for the for tripling the RE capacity called from uh, APEC discussions? And um, of the 682 contracts, how many are ongoing projects or in the pipeline? Maybe in the next three to five years. And do we have foreign investors for that? And can you give us data or uh, status of energy sector uh, in APEC? Thank you. Uh, firstly, on the 682 contracts, these are service contracts, which we have already approved. But this means that they are uh, go, should do pre-development activities and a lot of you know, permits and all, all these uh, clearances. And at, and if at the point they've proven the, the resource that they have identified to be economically, technically feasible, they can proceed. But I think they still have to work on their investors or, or a lot other things. So that's why I said potential capacity. But the good thing is all these are very much interested in uh, doing renewable energy in the Philippines. 
Now, as to investors for those different contracts, I, maybe I don't have the details, but I'd like to think this is a combination of local investors as well as foreign investors, because there are investors who are, who are also rich in technologies, they have new technologies, and uh, if we just leave it to local investors, maybe they cannot really afford to <laughs> shoulder all the, the investments required for all this renewable energy. So it's a combination of both the foreign and the local investors who are in this renewable energy service contracts. Okay, question. Ma'am, Ms. Aster, Ms. Madam first. Yes. Uh, sorry, just for the record, um, the Cebu Minister's declaration, um, how do we call it? Is it more of a, an action plan, a framework, and how hopeful are we that the member economies will agree to adopt this? Thanks. Actually, we call it a uh, declaration, but technically these are all statements, but we think declaration is a stronger word because uh, it's accompanied by energy ministerial instructions. So whatever were declared in the first document, there's an accompanying document which says uh, Cebu ministerial instructions. So these are the instructions for, to be implemented by the energy working group uh, to, be, to make the declaration happen or to make it a reality. So it's a combination of Cebu Ministerial Declaration and Cebu Ministerial Instructions on how to do things so that these declarations could be put in place. Follow up. So is it more of an action plan or uh, guidelines or... Sorry. Is it an action plan or guidelines that uh, the member economy should follow in the future uh, once they agreed to adopt it? Yeah, these are statements, and then uh, the declaration would have the programs and uh, activities, the action plans, and we are, all the economies are bound to, to abide, not really abide, but to cooperate in uh, implementing these programs that may be put in place. In fact, as uh, the Philippines has, has been approved for uh, an APEC-funded project we call Energy Resili Resiliency in Off-Grid Areas. So for the first time, the Department of Energy was approved for a project that is funded by APEC. And the objective is to come up with a manual on guidelines on energy resiliency in off-grid areas. So things of those sort, where our experts gather, we, we put them in one area, there's a strong exchange of ideas, sharing of best practices, and then we document this for the guidance of the other APEC economies. So that's just one example among so many programs that are being implemented. In fact, the Low Carbon Model Town is one project which was implemented because it was declared by the ministers, this was in the past, that we should have low carbon future or something like greening program for the different APEC economies. Sorry, last. Um, did As we the already director just would like to add something to that. Maybe to add to uh, the response earlier by the undersecretary. The ministers will actually be issuing the instructions to the different experts groups. There are experts group on fossil fuels, renewable energy, on uh, energy data, and there are even task forces to fully implement whatever instructions the ministers will agree on uh, Tuesday, all of these uh, experts group and task forces will be asked to develop their respective action plans. And in the next meeting of the energy ministers, each of them will be asked to report on the status of their implementation. The Philippines being the host today of this year's uh, uh, APEC activities and meetings, uh, are the fo uh, I mean the focal persons no, of the Philippines, especially on the energy sector, who are attending these different task forces and experts groups, are actually going to be tasked to see to it that we see the implementation of the different instructions to be issued by the ministers. 
it is going to be our primary uh, uh, objective in attending the next meetings and the different program implementations of, of APEC that whatever we agree, whatever is given by the ministers to be done is implemented accordingly. To cite an example, I don't know if you have noted that we had this experts group meeting, uh, experts group on energy efficiency and conservation. They had a meeting in Cebu sometime in August. This is one of the experts groups that uh, has been tasked to look into energy efficiency uh, and conservation programs and projects of APEC. And then earlier on, we had the er, er, uh, experts group on uh, renewable energy technologies. This particular expert, experts group had its meeting in Ilocos Norte sometime in March or April. So this is the particular experts group which implements all programs and, and projects, activities related to renewable energy and a lot of other expert, uh, uh, task forces and, and committees that are put in place so that, of course, this is all supervised by the Energy Working Group that are responsible for implementing all these programs and projects to be able to implement the ministerial instructions. Okay, since we have limited time, uh, we can only Okay, sir. Last question. Last two question, and the, this is the first. Uh, Ma'am, out of the 682 approved applications, uh, how many are from Cebu? Oh. Mm. Maybe we can just give us your uh, email address or something. Maybe uh, we can give you that information. We don't have it right uh, now. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, my, question, uh, so my second question. Robert is, will, will just respond to that question. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, my second question is on energy resiliency infrastructure. Will this include underground power lines? Because we have in Cebu an underground power line from uh, one kilometer from Capitol to Fuente Ospina, but it is financed by the Visayan Electric Company and VECO, but VECO is trying to recover their, uh, its investment by collecting from the consumers. If this will include underground power line, will the government subsidize it? Okay, uh, yeah, I think a good option is really to do underground because hindi na maapektuhan ng hangin at ng malakas na hangin, ng bagyo, but then, it's also totoo na, it's also true that it's a very expensive technology. So it's something that we have to look into, but I'm not even sure if government could subsidize it. I think something has to be worked on. And I think even um, with the APEC ministers around, trade and investments will be promoted. So maybe this is something that among ministers or among economies, trade and investments can be um, worked on so that prices of all these techno new, 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 new supplies, materials, technologies could be discussed and hopefully there could be a cooperation so that prices will not be you know, so costly uh, so that we can do this technology in our own country. So that's one reason why we should have APEC, because they can talk it out. And the members of APEC are no less than USA, Russia, and all these uh, economies which are advanced in technology. So I think we can cooperate, discuss, and work together in, along this line. Okay, last question. Ma'am, please. Ma'am, so if not through subsidy, how can we push for increased investments in the energy sector, not only in the Philippines and in the entire region? Push investments. Did I get you right? Your question yes, is? Pushing for investments, if not uh, through subsidy, by uh, uh, through not giving subsidy if the government 
um, is not in favor of giving subsidies for investments in the e energy sector. So how are we go going to push um, investments in that sector? Well, uh, we've been giving incentives uh, like for renewable energy, as mentioned by one of you earlier, that there is this law, renewable energy law, which was passed in 2008. This particular law gives both fiscal and non-fiscal incentives so that more and more investors will come into our country. And then we, as the Department of Energy, conduct regularly investments forums, so a lot of fora is being done all over the country, but main, I think we always do it in Cebu and Davao, and of course Manila, so that we can uh, attract more investors to go in our, to, to, to invest here in the Philippines. And also through this APEC, we are also able to articulate that we need investors along this area or in this field, so that uh, they're also aware that for the richer economies, the developed economies, they could be uh, informed that we need these this investments for energy and hopefully there is one way that we can convey to them, uh, come here in the Philippines and invest in this. Of course, as the director just said earlier, it's not only Philippines. Among APEC economies, investments has always been uh, the, 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 the word that is uh, being discussed, it's, it's very important as far as APEC is concerned because it's more on economy. So economy relates also to, to investments, I believe. Thank you. Okay, that's a wrap. Uh, thank you, uh, Yusek Aison, Director Jess, and Director Labios for that. Uh, Okay, uh, for the media, uh, some announcements. Uh, see, you, see you again tomorrow for the EMM press briefing. That's in uh, here also, Move and Pick. And uh, on the 13th, Minister's Press Conference in Shang, Rosal, for those who will be going. So thank you everyone for your participation. Love and light. <laughs>